I posted a summer favorites or recent favorites video a few months back and some people in the comments were into that and was like, you know, I'd be interested in seeing more. So here is my end of summer, beginning of fall favorites video. Just lifestyle things, not too much bookish things, just, you know, like... Things I've been enjoying, obviously, because favorites. Welcome to a sunny book nook, by the way. Please subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. And oh, to get into my first favorite, it's going to be writing. I've been really getting back into writing or into writing for an audience. I created a substack called On Loop with two zeros as the loop O's. So check that out. It's always linked in my description. And I also have like, a book recommendation newsletter for paid subscribers. I mean, obviously you can get my book recs here and you have. So I've been enjoying that. I put out an essay about sort of the landscape of booktube and what it looks like from the vantage point of someone who's been doing this for years now and sort of the ways that booktube and online book discourse sort of mediates the morality of media consumption and what that looks like. So I'm proud of that. That's my most recent, I think. That's sort of for the public for free. And I also enjoy, I'm, I'm proud of everything that's been put up there at this point, but I also did a post, I, I made an essay about the digital landscape's relationship to feminism and how bad <laughs> it kind of is. So there's that as well. And yeah, let's just get into my other favorites. So I'm gonna talk about some music first. First of all, I've been a Chapel Roan stan since day one. <laughs> well, not since like day one, but since the Chapel Roan project is like a thing with Pink Pony Club, Naked in Manhattan, Kaleidoscope, Hot To Go. I was there for all those drops. Actually, in one of my vlogs, I vlogged a me being like, oh my gosh, the Hot To Go music video is dropping tonight. I'm so excited. I've been there, okay? So when Good Luck Babe became like a smash hit this past summer, I was like, whoa, everyone's on this wave. And now everyone wants to have their hot take about fucking Chapel Row and like, or Chapel Row. I don't know. <laughs> I do know, but because I'm a fan, I'm a fan. But yeah, like her album's still fantastic. She's just sort of been elevated into this pop stardom that I don't even think even she expected. Because like, I think people have talked about how she ultimately just wanted to be like gay famous, you know, like famous to gay people. But now... Now we got just anybody listening to her thinking that like they get it when they don't. But <laughs> so of course that's an always favorite like Renaissance joked about this on the podcast but like I'm giving Stan like cause that's I've been there you know what I mean like I, I joke with my friends oh I made her famous because <laughs> I was really pushing that chapel agenda hard for years now so it's really fulfilling to see the fruits of your labor. <laughs> be manifest but anyways no she's so she's so cool and every time she's like mean to her fans or talks about how being famous sucks the more I like her talking about her mental illness which I was reading about on her Instagram post from years back like every time she talks more about that the more I'm the more I'm a fan the more all I can say is queen you know that is that but I guess newer favorites I do really enjoy the new or the two like pop albums of the summer short and sweet by Sabrina Carpenter and Brat by Charlie XCX. I think they're such great albums. They're so much fun. We rank and review both albums on the podcast if you want to check it out. Always linked in the description, of course. But yeah, Brat, I think, had the cultural blueprint that it's created, the, the Brat print, maybe, <laughs> the way that it has totally consumed like pop culture and media in this way is kind of it's like awe inspiring, but it also has created some really bad cultural <laughs> responses like NATO posting that shit. Kamala. Oh, oh God. Anyways, I think the album is really fun. My favorite songs off the album are Back to Back, Everything is Romantic, Sympathy is a Knife featuring Lord, and I love the singles, Von Dutch, Club Classic, uh, 360. So good. So good. Like, I just need to be in the club, you know, like she should be in the club. Like, she should be in the club. <laughs> but on Short and Sweet, my number one favorite song is Bed Chem. Oh my god, I think it's so brilliant. Come out of me. I'm in camaraderie. <laughs> said you're not in my time. Wait, is it you? Said said I'm not in your time zone, but you want to be. No. 
said you're not in my times and but you want to be where art thou why not upon with me see it in your <laughs> it's so good it's so good and catchy and everything i also really love the song good graces off that and again the singles espresso and please 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 so good i was bumping that bumping that bumping that like for the weeks and months leading up to the release of this album i'm very satisfied i mean it and you'll know this if you listen to the episodes, which may or may not be out at this point, but there are some songs off the albums that I'm like, eh, could take it or leave it. But I think cohesively as albums, like, I like them. They're good. I've been listening to them a lot. I enjoy it. I enjoy it greatly. So those are definitely favorites of the summer. The next favorite, Hard Turn, White Mushrooms. Like the cheapest type of mushrooms you get at the store, like the whole ones, white mushrooms. They can be big, they can be small. I am obsessed with them. Like. I love those damn white mushrooms. Like I think they have such a unique flavor, but like aren't too, don't have such a strong taste to them. It just really appeals to me. Like I don't like them raw. Like I don't really get people who put like raw mushroom in their salads. Like, ugh, I don't, I don't like that. Like I like them to be like cooked, usually sauteed. Ugh, I love a sauteed mushroom, even steamed, broiled anything. Like baked mushrooms are just so good. Highly recommend them. I'm not even vegetarian, but like, if I was, like, I'd be eating beans and mushrooms at every single fucking meal. Like, it's just that good, I fear. Like, it's just so good. I love white mushrooms. And if you, if you don't, that's okay, I guess. But anyways, not all of us can have great taste. Speaking of great taste, I have been using my Magic Mind Mental Performance elixir shots for the past like few weeks and I really enjoy this like I really do think it makes my mind sharper and gives me some energy that isn't like from chugging a celsius like it's it feels very wholesome and it is like I think it is a really solid product but yes this is definitely another favorite like I've been really enjoying these they they really actually have helped me like focus and get my energy up alongside like my iced coffee or whatever whatever I'm drinking in the morning I mean drink water of course drink drink a lot of water but I think the magic mind mental performance elixir is pretty it's pretty excellent like I've gone through a whole one of these like boxes again I'll have this product linked down below thank you so much to magic mind also for the sponsoring of my update video here I'm really so happy that they sponsored me because I got to discover it so another favorite of the summer not using dating apps guys i need everybody to delete their dating apps like i <laughs> i hate them so much with a passion and mind you i've been like single or in and out of like situationships for many years now <laughs> like i haven't been in like a real long-term established relationship but I, I always knew that it was not going to happen off of a dating app. And there are some of my friends who like have met each other and have become really good, you know, partner, life partners via like Bumble or whatever. But I just think that those are the exceptions that prove the rule that dating apps are very dehumanizing and a really isolating way. Like they, they promise you this chance of connection and relationship and community, but they really, that's not their goal. Like the they're there to make money off of your loneliness and the ratio of like men versus women on this app like it really just feels like a sort of a, a market of women and their bodies and it's it's weird like we're in a sort of social situation where it feels almost impossible to not have to not use dating apps when like you're single but i really think and i'm not even just saying this like as a lesbian but like Generally, I just really, just, I really disencourage it. And I would, <laughs> one of my favorites and has been for multiple years now is not using dating apps. Like I've just never had like a good, much less even a standout experience from a dating app. And like, I did use it. I did use like Hinge or Bumble or whatever, semi consistently or every now and then way back when, but I just, I don't like it. I think, you know, just like, meet people out in the world, go join a book club, go to your gay bar, like have your friends introduce you. I, I don't know, even like follow someone on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know, like date someone you meet off Twitter, like anything but a fucking dating app. Like I can't, I just can't. I, 
I really don't like them and I really think that they're bad for our collective souls and also just society and humanity. And that's my take. That's my stance. I say that as someone who like has only ever met people that I've like been with through like what I just said, like meeting people at parties, meeting people on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, like people I went to school with and whatnot. Like I, I just think you have a lot of options. And in while using dating apps seems like a way of sort of expanding your options, it really is a limitation, I think. It allows you to kind of fall back on it as a, I don't know if crutch is the correct or sort of best word here, but in that way, like, you know, you just can't have that to fall back on and think that with this, you don't have to do other things and push yourself to like, you know, be out there and whatever. I just don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. And I think everyone should delete dating apps, especially women, (laughs) because wow, it's so dehumanizing to try to put yourself out there in that way, a digital compression of you into six photos and like four lines of hopefully witty enough dialogue to attach uh, to attract someone i also think like the whole phenomenon of screenshotting and posting on social media people's like profiles unless they're those profiles are like completely deranged and they're like and i hate women and gay people like whatever like who cares but like in general just by and large most of the time i just find it very unclassy and unserious like it's like you're on there too. Like you're making fun of people who are on there and people you match with or whatever. Like when you yourself are there, like this is just too, this is a clown to clown connection here is really how I view it. Like I don't like that. And also like just show it to your friends or something. Like don't post it on fucking Twitter for everyone to see. Like just send a screenshot into the group chat. Like what happened to that? What happened to that? I just, I, it's not an antidote to loneliness and it's not a shortcut out of there. It is, in fact, the opposite. It really, I think it really narrows your capacities. But that's just my opinion, and that's just one of my favorites. <laughs> also, I have bug bites. Oh, also, my best friend and I, the one that, whom I host the podcast with, I'm like, I have bug bites all over my arms. Like, do you see this? This is my bruising, and the. <laughs> from scratching at it so hard i also have cat scratches on my hands too i was thinking about this and i'm like i have femme dyke hands because i got cat scratches on there and my nails and i can do things i'm strong i'm a strong woman anyways um what was i talking about i don't remember but speaking of hands i another favorite of mine is paint lab nails. These aren't paint lab. These are glamnetic actually. Like I, I use the glamnetic nails cause like they're very, they're very cute. They have cute designs. They're pretty high quality. But what I just had on before these nails were these paint lab like tortoise shell patterns. Um, I don't think you can see it that well, but like <laughs> I loved this stuff and I got so many compliments on it and people were really surprised when they were, um, when I told them they were press-ons cause they just looked really good. I think like once you get down to it and figure out how to use press-ons for real, like they can look so good. Like these look, I love how these look. And I think they match with, I mean, you can't really see my outfit, but I think they match with my outfit as well. They definitely match with my socks. <laughs> Anyways. And the other thing about the paint lab ones, which are like pretty cheap, like eight to $12, I think 10 to 12. I don't know, like not too expensive. They're glue. This is the best glue I've found. Like I've used so many different glues over the years, but like this, this stuff actually works. The paint lab glue. Paint Lab, if you see this, please sponsor me. I want more of your nails and I think they're so great <laughs> and so cute and the glue is so good. The, all the prep pad stuff that comes with it as well, I think it's it's a bit more effective than Glamnetic in my opinion, even though, and Glamnetic is like more Ulta Beauty, like a bit more high end. I think you can find, you can find Paint Lab, which is what I did on, at Urban Outfitters and also just online on their website or like on Amazon, so. Anyways, I'm really enjoying these press-on nails and I'm really enjoying the Paint Lab press-on glue and nails and just, yeah, I've been on the press-on nail wave for like a minute now. I had an era where I was getting my nails done at the salon and doing gel overlays and like gel XLs and Russian and like it's just really expensive and a time suck and you're paying someone else to do labor for your hands and your appearance that 
for something kind of casual in a way that you could just do yourself. And I think this is my version of that. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it greatly. I would recommend it actually. So, oh yes, this is the thing I was going to talk about before I got derailed. <laughs> water bottles. I have a favorite, which is my water bottle that I've had for forever. Like this is like a random one that I got sent in like a PR package or something for a movie. And I just like stickered it up. A lot of the stickers are like fading cause like I actually use this thing. But like, I truly believe that you do not need a new water bottle. If you have a water bottle that works, just keep using it. You don't need a Stanley cup. You don't need a new Owala water bottle, even though those are really cute. If you already have it, use it. The insulation technology is still there. Like it's not, it doesn't wear off over time. Like if you can still use it, then still use it. I'm very pro not getting a new water bottle if you like actually don't really need one. I, I really believe in that. And I think everyone should as well. Live that truth. Oh my gosh, I don't wanna go get my makeup bag right now. And I don't think it would even focus in this, in this lens, but one makeup item that I have been loving is what's on my eyebrows right now, which is the Peri Para eyebrow pencil. I don't know what the actual name is. I'll put the screenshot of like the product on here, but I, this is so good. Like I think my eyebrows have never looked better than when using this pencil. And really like, it's not even this specific brand or product itself, although I have enjoyed this. I think it's just like, I, I went to Korea a few months ago and I was like in those fucking drugstores just putting shit in my fucking bag, like, girl, we're, <laughs> we're taking this home with me. And like, I'm wearing a K-Beauty lip right now. Uh, the eyebrows though, like, I never realized until I started using this like Korean eyebrow pencil how bad the color match of like Western beauty brands are. Like the Anastasia Beverly Hill, the NYX, like their black shades are just too, they're not for like East Asians, you know, like they're for black women and South Asian women, which is good because everyone who wears makeup should be able to access products that work for them. But like with someone when when you have the features of like an east asian person like i do where your eyebrow hairs are pretty sparse and light even though the hair on your head is like obviously like pitch black the eyebrow pencil itself and the eyebrow color itself like needs to be kind of lighter more gray more toned down that is doesn't really seem to be available in western beauty markets like they just are too they're too harsh on your face whereas this it's like a toned down gray that's like cool enough for my face and i think really matches my actual eyebrow hairs really well I just, I'm really enjoying it. Like I should have really tapped into this years ago. Like of course K-Beauty would work better for my East Asian features in some things like, you know, my eyebrows, just stuff like that. Like I, looking back at old videos and photos of me with my, like I don't cringe cause like I didn't, I was just doing what I wanted to do and I thought it looked good then. And I still do think like a lot of my eyebrow looks in past years have been pretty good, but like this kind of elevates it to a different level. Like, I just think it looks so good. I feel so good with this particular like shade and the coloring there. And of course, like I, I really should have thought of this sooner, but I do enjoy it a lot. Then another beauty favorite is this curling iron that I've had since middle school. <laughs> like I seriously don't even remember when I got this or probably my mom gifted it to me. It's the Seydu, can you see this? It's the Seydu Revolution curling wand. I think it's probably an inch and a half. I don't know. Anyways, I love this curling iron. I use it when I curl my hair, which is semi-regularly now because it's longer than it has been since I was like in 15 or 16. I didn't curl my hair today because I had, I washed it semi-recently and I wasn't going anywhere, but like because my hair is kind of longer and it's really thick, it kind of weighs itself down a lot and becomes flat very easily. Well, not flat, like my hair is very voluminous naturally. Like I'm really blessed to have voluminous, kind of wavy, thick hair. Like honestly, like the genetics, they really, they really got me there. But sometimes like the actual waves that form in my hair are not as like tight as they could be. <laughs> and I know they could be when, they, when my hair is a bit shorter. So kind of go in there with my wand and touch it up or, you know, create, the that look of voluminous bouncy curls that I really enjoy and I think it looks pretty good <laughs> and I've I've done my hair with this curling iron and nothing else in previous a lot of my previous recent videos or it's been my hair on like day two of that the day before having done that in the morning and like it's good I like it. I like how it looks I like how the curls fall out and I also think this goes back into the sort of like 
thing where you don't buy new things you don't need. Like I don't, I have no need to have a different curling iron. I'm gonna use this until it fucking breaks apart, which it better not, by the way. You better not break. You better keep working until I fucking die <laughs> because it's so good. I think using the shit that you've had for a long time is very sexy and important. So I have a couple other favorites that I don't have on me that I would want to hold and show you. So that'll be in my next favorites video. If you do enjoy this one, please let me know and I'll make another one. But I guess my last favorite thing is I really enjoy this one beauty guru named Jamie Page. I've been following her for a long time, like, well, on and off. Like when I was in high school, maybe even middle school, I was watching her videos because she's been doing this for a long time. Like a lot of the beauty makeup girlies on YouTube have been, but her videos lately have been really satisfying for me to watch. I really enjoy, I mean, we have very different skin types. Like she has very dry skin and I have very oily skin, but I think like a lot of her product recommendations and reviews are just really satisfying to watch. Like I, oh, and I love, I love, love, love her current series where she buys dresses and buys clothes from a brand and then tries them all on and gives us her real thoughts. She did one with Reformation and before that, I forgot what brand, Revolve maybe. And give us a rating of whether she thinks it's worth the money and all that. I like that series a lot. Jamie, I think Jamie is really cool. She's Canadian, I think, and I enjoy watching her videos while getting ready. There's a stink bug on my window and it's been there like all day. Like I'm scared, like, please don't come into my house, sir. <laughs> stink bugs love to be in my damn room, or at least they did for a long time. And now I see one trying to break in. Like, no, you were not invited. Well, I think that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy my non-bookish, more lifestyle-y favorites video. And please comment down below <laughs> whether you think any of my favorites are incorrect or wrong or if you would disagree <laughs> because I would like to know. And also, let me know what you think about the whole dating app thing, conversation thing I brought up, my, my discourse, my point of view what I'm thinking, because I would like to know what you think as well. Have you had success with it? Or I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty staunch in my beliefs, so I don't think you can really change my mind. But yeah, and I've also been on this way for a minute, like for at least six months now, I've just been like, no, like, I don't think anyone should use it. Or at least like a year, maybe I'm like, I just, I just want everyone to free themselves for real. Like our lives are already so mediated by technology. And in a lot of ways, it does actually connect people together in ways that we couldn't otherwise, but I don't think dating apps are one of those things. So anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.